All right, now we're doing this movie called We Have a Ghost. We got Anthony Mackie in it. I ain't seen him in a minute, you know what I'm saying? Since that movie, uh, Sin Chronic or whatever like that. Yeah, remember that shit? Every time he does a movie, he always got some crazy-ass backstory, so I expect nothing less from this. Yeah. So anyway, we start looking at this house that was built in like 1904. Some people get scared away from it and never come back. Now we go to a whole year later. I was just letting you know when the house was built. This is all being done in real time. We got the Presley family about to come through and get happy life and happy wife. You got the happy wife, Nina. Got the husband, Frank. And his two kids, Felton and Kevin. Now, Kevin didn't even want to get out the car for real. So the person that showed up the house is named Barbara or whatever like that. Now, it looks kind of dirty on the inside, I ain't gonna front. But the thing is, it was supposed to be on the clearest market. And basically, Frank is the type of guy that's gonna make things work. So basically, they end up getting the house. So basically, as they go through the house, like Kevin's doing more inspecting, specs upstairs in the attic or what, uh, whatnot. Then he sees this ghostly figure comes out of nowhere and is trying to scare him like, Whoa! and then Kevin's just looking up and starts laughing like, what the fuck is this? And he just walks through another wall telling himself, it's like, oh, he actually really is a ghost. So then we see Kevin going outside the house. He's got this next door neighbor named Joy. Now right off the back, you think they're just going to click, right? Because Kevin plays the guitar, Joy plays the trombone. So, you know, they instruments at heart. So he ends up getting to school and all of a sudden Joy calls him into the bathroom for something. He's like, hey, can you be a lookout? Like, what the fuck? And someone kept writing a number up on the bathroom walls and whatnot. And then they get to talk and they realize they're neighbors and that's how, how it goes down. So now everybody in the family, you know what I'm saying? They're in the house. They're celebrating the house and whatnot. Frank tries to play some music and liven up the room. Then they got this conversation about guitar players going and then he's talking about Jimi Hendrix is the best. His son is saying somebody else is. He tried to take his phone because he didn't want him listening to it. But after he explained his reasons, his father ended up giving him the phone back. I'm just like... So you can tell back in the day they used to be close. You think to yourself, what happened over the years? So anyway, later on, Kevin goes back up into the attic. The ghost comes out again. He's just like, come on, stop embarrassing yourself. Like, cut it out. They start talking. He tries to shake his hand. Of course, he can't shake his hand. He's a ghost. But then somehow, he gets the power to actually make sure he shakes his hand. So he can touch him, but them can't touch ghosts. I'm like, all the ghost movies, I've never figured that shit out yet. But anyway, so he goes by the name of Ernest Schiller. The ghost, I mean. But he can't remember anything about his life. I remember ghost tropes. They start losing their memory when they turn into ghosts. Remember this. So then while they're talking, their brother's about to come in the room. All of a sudden, the ghost disappears. He starts wrestling with him. All of a sudden, he gets thrown through some boxes. So I know Felton's thinking to himself, when the fuck did Kevin get so strong? But obviously, that was not Kevin's doing. That was Ernest's doing. Okay, so Kevin, when his first time seeing Ernest, he was recording it on his phone. And then recorded the whole thing about him trying to scare him and then go through the wall. This is going to set up a whole chain of events. Now, why is that? Because Felton took his phone one day and wanted to see what he was recording, what he was doing. He's like, oh, snap, you recorded a real ghost? That's what's going on in the streets? And then he tells Frank, he's like, yeah, yo, we could make a fortune off of this, you know what I'm saying? Put it on YouTube and all that shit. But at the same time, you're thinking to themselves, they don't believe this is really a ghost. Like, come on. But they're like, wait a minute, walk through the wall, it's got to be a ghost. Basically, they want to put it up with clickbaits and likes. But the thing is, they don't want to tell their mom because they know she's going to freak out. Now I'm thinking to myself, if you're going to put this up on YouTube and Instagram and things of that nature, you know she's going to see this and find out, right? Like, he's like, yeah, Kevin, you better keep it a secret too. First off, Felton took Kevin's phone. You think Kevin wanted to tell Felton, let alone tell anybody else? I'm like, so anyway, it gets to a point, Frank sends out the video, likes are going up. Then we end up seeing this ghost guru on TV. I forgot what they call her. She's basically the chick that plays a hoe in every movie. You know, Pootie Tang, American Pie. Can't remember her name. Bottom line is, now she's playing a guru or something. A ghost catcher guru. Well, anyway, I'll bring her name up later. Then we go to this lady named Leslie, right? Now, she's doing, like, ghost catching story spirit, spirits, you know what I'm saying, series for, like, forever. She writes books. And she's basically doing, like, book seminars. But she's never been able to prove it, right? So, anyway, Frank and Felton end up going into the attic one day. They're trying to call out Ernest. Kevin's like, dude, he's not going to come out like this. He starts playing the guitar, all of a sudden he comes out, you know what I'm saying? They talking for a little bit. But the thing is, Ernest doesn't talk. Or you can't really say words like that, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, Nina comes upstairs. She's like, man, what the heck is going on? Y'all just standing around doing stuff, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, Frank is like, hey. <laughs> she turns around and sees Ernest. He starts freaking out. She's like, ah! her, face so, ah, her facial expressions are hilarious. And of course, she tripping. She's like, man, we got to move out of this house. We got crazy ass ghosts. And then here comes Frank. He's like, look, man. I'm trying to do something with this here. You know what I'm saying? We can make a lot of money off this. The YouTube likes and all that shit. So Nina doesn't want to go along with it. But bottom line, she's like, all right. Next thing you know, the video clip is blowing up all over the place. Then it shows a bunch of people doing all these like TikTok challenges and whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, they probably would act like this in real life seeing this goofy ass shit. You got a bunch of people talking about their love and earnest and all this other craziness. And I'm thinking to myself all this time, like, how the fuck is everybody seeing this damn ghost? Usually in movies like this is like a select few people or, you know, people that delve into Ouija boards and shit like that. But I guess if everybody couldn't see him, honestly, in this type of movie, we wouldn't have no storyline. So there you go. So the videos start getting so many views and so many likes that the ghost guru actually wants to come to the house itself to give a proper interview to Frank. So basically, Kevin wants Ernest to make an impression and really just go all out with the ghost hunting shit or whatever like that. So now they're about to have the interview. At first, Frank is scared thinking to himself like he's not going to come out. Everybody was thinking think he's a fraud and shit. Then all of a sudden he comes out and scares the shit out of everybody. He's got like Resident Evil 3 hands coming out of his mouth. Face start melting and shit, scaring everybody. 
So Frank thought it was a failure at first until they all saw the videos and it became a huge success. The videos had like 3 million views in like one night. <laughs> so later on while all this is going on, like Kevin's trying to do his best to make sure Ernest can remember things from his past. And he pulls out this little stuffed bunny and then it's like he's trying to remember but he can't. Then we have Leslie again. She sees all these like videos and stuff. She's starting to think this Ernest shit is real. Now we find out Leslie's not just a book writer. She used to work for the CIA. And she used to be involved in this project called Wizard Chip. Now what is Wizard Chip? Basically an organization where they got people hunting down ghosts. I mean, they had the equipment to do it or some Ghostbusters shit, you know what I'm saying? But us superior doesn't look, doesn't believe it yet. We don't call him Captain Shillings. I mean, he looked like a fake-ass Joe Biden, but anyway. So now it's like a phenomenon. He got all these people in front of our house and shit. Nina, you know, like, I can't even go to the store with all these goddamn people, man. What the fuck? There's one dude at the back door dressed like Jesus Christ. I'm like, come on, man. So it gets to a point where Kevin's in school and Joy, he's been telling Joy a lot of stuff, right? So she finds some information on Ernest. It turns out she found like a driver's license. He went by this different alias named Paul something. And he used to hang up with some guy at this uh, bar or whatever like that. So it said the bar is only like a couple blocks down the street. So that's where they got to go. So the thing is they go back up in the attic and this is where Joy finally meets Ernest. She kind of low-key acting like a groupie right now, but it's like she's keeping it, keeping it mellow. I mean, it's a fucking ghost. What do you expect? So basically Kevin's going to try to figure out a way if Ernest can actually leave the house. Because I don't think he's ever tried. So he gets him to leave the house in just in time, too, because all of a sudden, Leslie comes to the goddamn door, basically trying to hunt down this ghost. But I'm like, come on, can a ghost really be a fugitive from justice? I mean, like, really? Even fake Joe Biden had to ask that dumbass question. He was like, he's like, come on, yo, like, really? So while she's talking to the parents, and the parents about to kick her out, Kevin ends up taking uh, Felton's Dodge Challenger. Like, you know what? He didn't even do that yet. This is kind of weird. They try to sneak out the back. The Jesus Christ dude looks around. He's like, hey, that's Ernest. Then they all start chasing that them. And I'm thinking to myself, everybody can see this ghost like, the fuck? But once again, if they couldn't, we wouldn't have a storyline. So again, anyway, they start running, getting out of the way. And then that's when they get his brother's Dodge Challenger and they dip off. So at that point, they end up going to this bar. They ask this lady about uh, the dude named Ernest and all this stuff. She wasn't about to tell him shit until she looked at the picture again. And then they look on the wall. And there's this picture of him standing with this guy. So we're like, is it the real Ernest? Like, what's going on here? So basically, Joy gets the location and address of this guy. You know what I'm saying? Finds out he's about 400 miles away. So they're going to be going on some driving. So as they've been driving, they end up going to this gas station, you know, try to get some energy drinks, and all of a sudden, the police recognize the car. And why'd they recognize it? Because the CIA people came back and seized the house. So the parents like, look, you're going to help us out any way possible. So they put out a press conference saying that the ghost kidnapped her son and Joy. How the fuck does a ghost kidnap anybody? But anyway, so police spot Joy and, all, and Kevin and all them, and then the car chases on. They get away, barely. So now they get to this hotel, you're thinking to yourselves... How would they be able to pay for a hotel without anybody finding out the shit? Well, that's where Ernest comes in. He sneaks some keys off of the thing and then takes it into the hotel and they get it popping. Because clearly they ain't had no money to pay for it and they ain't want to be discovered. So there you go. They get their alone time and shit. Then next day they back on the road. Now Ernest, because the Dodge Challenger got fucked up in a car chase or whatever like that, goes to this little lot and gets himself a decent car. And he need a different car anyway, you know what I'm saying? So it gets to a point they finally get to this guy's house, who's supposed to be the real Ernest Schilling. It's just him living there with this chick named Ramona. Now, before that, there was this scene where we see this flashback because Ernest was staring at this swing. And then we realized, oh, Ernest had a daughter, a daughter by the name of Junebug. So here's the story that real Ernest tells. Real Ernest says that the guy um, that's in that picture, his real name is Randy Cortera, something like that. Randy Montgomery, something like that. By my name is Randy. So he says apparently how he died is because he used to drink too much. He says that he left his daughter here one day and he decided he never came back. He was like, the thing is, who knows? Maybe he got drunk and, you know, crashed his car somewhere or something like that. The story sounds kind of iffy because he acts like he didn't remember this stuff. But now, again and again, this happened about 50 years ago. So Kevin's thinking to himself, there's no way he could have been like that. And Ernest is like, you do realize, you said he was a ghost that, you know, they can't remember things. So, hey. Then all of a sudden, the CIA busts through the door and everything. They finally catch up with Joy and Kevin. The ghost tries to stop him, but they start pulling out these sonic death rays and whatnot. And Randy has no choice but to give himself up. So now they catch him and put him in his little containment unit and all this shit. And Leslie's asking the boss, like, so what are you going to do with him? He's like, whatever we want. So you think to yourself, that's not good. So now I guess Leslie's getting the conscience all of a sudden. So we go back to the house. Kevin's all depressed. Frank gives his speech about wanting to help, but you know what I'm saying? He's always been about self at this point because he's trying to get a better life for his kids, but he wasn't thinking about them and all this other stuff. Bottom line, it's a soft father-to-son moment. You know what I mean? Then we get this scene where uh, the police are sticking them, um, Randy with cattle prods and shit like that. Then we get the real backstory because Randy starts remembering. See, it happened when they were back at the house or whatever like that. Now, Randy is giving his daughter Junebug over to Ramona or whatever like that, right? Because her, him and Ramona were lovers. Ramona had this evil look on her face as she was going upstairs and all of a sudden Ernest bashed the shit out of Randy in the back of his head. He ended up killing him done deal dead his shit and buried his ass. And that's where Ernest and Ramona lived with Junebug and I was like oh that's what happened. So basically Randy wasn't drunk. He was killed by his best friend Ernest. All over Ramona. So who we saw back at the house is in a fucking random ass daze. Like she don't even talk. She don't do nothing. Guess that's karma for your ass. 
Now you're thinking to yourself throughout the whole time, where the fuck is Junebug at then? I'll tell you that in a minute. So now that Randy remembers, he's like, fuck this shit. I'm trying to make my escape, but he can't get out this containment unit. All of a sudden, Leslie's the one that helps him out. So we're like, all right, cool. She gained her conscience and all that shit. So at that point, he's basically about to head back over to Kevin's house. Now, Kevin and the family, all them niggas trying to sleep. But guess who's standing in front of their door? Motherfucking Ernest. And he got guns. He was basically about to take Kevin out. because He's like, man, I tried to put this under 50 years. I tried to put this under the grave. And ghosts want to come back to life and fuck up my shit. So then Frank and Fountain go downstairs. They get him to slip up somehow, making him drop the gun. And they all running around the house. Then he ends up getting into the attic, and then it's one-on-one -on -one with Ernest and Kevin. Right before Kevin was about to get done deal, all of a sudden, Randy's back. The ghost, he cut back. He's like, I killed you, damn it. Randy shuts down Ernest, he hits him, done deal. Then Frank comes up the steps, and he's like, sees his son Kevin, he's like, wait a minute. He starts diving, you think, what is he diving for? He ends up going through Frank to stop Ernest, because apparently he was getting back up, and then pushes him out the window, he's done deal, dead as shit. Now, Ernest is dead, and Frank just saved his son, Kevin. There you have it. So then you see this one room where you see Kevin talking to Joe Biden looking at his nigga. And he's like, yo, what really happened, though? So we go to this flashback, and we see Kevin and Frank driving in the car. And who's in the back seat? Freaking Junebug. I'm like, where did they find her at? Where was she at the whole time? And they go out in the middle of the ocean, and you just see Ern or Frank standing over there or whatever like that. And Junebug is finally seeing her father in I don't know how long. So they have this little touching moment and all that other stuff. And then Kevin's with him, like, skipping rocks and all of a sudden. And then it's like, you know, uh, Ernest starts, Frank starts evaporating or whatever like that. You know, since his mission is complete, he has no other business on Earth. So now he could descend into the heavens and all that. Then afterwards, they end up selling the house. I'm like, why are they selling the house? But Kevin reassures Joy they're only going to be, like, you know, five miles down the street or something like that. He gets his kiss, he gets his boo, and that's how it goes down. And then that's pretty much the end of the movie. I know I keep beating this into the ground, but then I think to myself, look, how is everybody seeing this daggone ghost? But now that you heard me rant about the whole thing, basically, if nobody could see the ghost, we would have no plot to any of the story. None of this shit would be taking place. So there you have it. We have a ghost on Netflix. Check it out.